In just a moment, I'm going to perform and then share the secrets to a trick that many of you are going to immediately start to perform. Okay, you're going to have a blast with it. You're going to immediately start to perform it because it's easy to do because it uses a borrowed object. In fact, the spectator's borrowed phone. I know you're thinking that just looks like a piece of cardboard, Jay, not a phone, but it's gonna be, gotta use your imagination. This is the spectator's borrowed phone, okay? And also it leaves them with a souvenir of the impossible event on their phone. And the deck can be borrowed, the deck can be shuffled. It's just super commercial. It's the kind of trick that makes it a real, as the magicians say, a real worker, all right? Uh, here's how you start. First, the deck can be shuffled. Deck can be shuffled, deck can be borrowed, whatever. Completely on impromptu, completely impromptu, okay? And you say, look, we are gonna use a card because what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna ask you to perform a psychic feat. You're gonna use your latent psychic abilities to find a particular card out of 52 cards. But I think you're gonna need a little help. So we're gonna take a photograph of the card with your phone and you ask them to get off their phone and set it on camera mode and all that kind of thing, okay? Uh, and then you say, let's see, let's see which card we're going to use. And just to test everyone's psychic ability, does any, uh, anybody have an idea what card this is? And nobody has any clue or they guess and hopefully they get it wrong or they get it right. And it's an amazing trick. You say, we're going to use the, oh, Queen of Hearts. We're going to use the Queen of Hearts. And like I said, to give you a little help here to find the card in just a moment, I'm going to take a photograph of the Queen. You borrow their phone, you give a click of you holding uh, the Queen of Hearts, and then you uh, have them take uh, their own phone and hold it in their hands like this. See, I, to help you do this, I need you to concentrate on all the details of the Queen, okay? Think of the Queen's face, the heart color, all those kinds of things. They're doing all this while holding their phone in their own hand. Then you say, look, you're gonna try to find the Queen. I'm gonna give the cards a couple of cuts, and I'm not gonna have you select a card, okay? I'm gonna actually have you just uh, say now, whenever you feel the urge, they're holding the phone, holding the photograph of the queen. You go through like this and you go very fairly. They, and any time when they feel the urge, all you do, whenever they feel the urge, you actually cut the cards exactly where they say, which is so 100% free choice. They can say now whenever they want. And without any suspicious moves, you show them the one card that they stopped at is the card they were thinking of, Queen of Hearts. So that's a very cool trick. But at this point, you say to them, I know what you're thinking. Does that always work, right? And I'll be honest with you, the trick doesn't always work. I mean, you did a great job. You had those psychic abilities, okay? And holding the phone, I think, to help. But some people, they miss the card. And you might be thinking, well, what do I do if they miss the card? Well, here's what I do. I'm going to go through the cards here. Somebody, and one of the spectators or the spectator themselves, again, they can say now whenever they want. And they say now whenever they want. They go now, and you go, fine, what do we got here? Two of clubs. You say two of clubs, fair enough. Now, if instead of the queen, you had stopped at the two, all I would have done is leaned over, and even though I haven't touched your phone from the very beginning, I snapped my fingers. Take a look at the photograph of the queen. And when people take their hand off their own phone and find a photograph, not of the queen, but of the just freely selected card, and there's no photograph of the queen anywhere in there, like in their history, anything like that. When people find that, it is a total killer. If you are an experienced magician, then you not only know how I performed that trick, you also know you can do a lot of different variations on the handling, depending on your techniques and slice that you know. Uh, but the idea itself, you also know, is crazy commercial. It builds so beautifully, right? Because there's two moments of magic. All the focus is on the spectator's psychic abilities and you use their phone and you've got that time lapse and you're so, so far ahead from the very beginning, right? And again, the fact that you can use a shuffle deck means you can do it at any time in your show. So it is, as I said before, a real worker. I'm gonna reveal all the secrets in just a moment. First, let's ask the question of the week because this week, uh, well, first on this video, I'm gonna be announcing the flesh and bone winners, okay? Last video, we had a flesh and bones contest Test Flesh and Bones is this cool trick you can find at sankeymagic.com on my website. You should note too that most of the tricks I mention on my videos are only available in one place in the whole world. They're only available at sankeymagic.com. Some of my old tricks, frankly, some of the out of date stuff and really old stuff you can find on other sites and other stores, but all my new stuff from the past four, five, six years is only found one place in the world sankeymagic.com, okay? So flesh and bone is this cool gimmick where you can pull, uh, comes with a special ring that you can pull through your finger and then immediately have people examine it. Very sweet, cool, kind of funky trick with a finger ring. Having said that, uh, we're gonna announce the winners 
uh, of all the flesh and bone contest a little bit later in this video. For now, let me ask you the question of the week, because this week I'm giving away one of my all time best selling card magic projects. It's called revolutionary card magic. It's a monster length. There are dozens of tricks, really a uh, real range of stuff from total beginners to really advanced card magic. OK, so uh, heads up on that. So this is your chance to win. I'm going to give away 12 of them. OK, next week on the video, I'll announce the winners. Here's my question of the week. Uh, t speaking of photographs on phones, if you could snap your fingers and on your own phone, you could have a photograph of anything in the universe. Authentic, 100 percent legitimate photograph of absolutely anything in the universe. And let's jump it. Let's even throw it in more. It could be at any place in any time. So it could be from the future, from the past. OK, you could have a photograph on your phone of absolutely anything. What would it be? Leave a comment down below. You'll be automatically entered into the revolutionary card magic contest. OK, so let's jump into this trick. So um, because I drew this here, the two of clubs to represent the photo that will be on their phone, I did have to. Some of you ex experts might have noticed I did have to control the two of clubs, which is on top of the deck to start here. OK, but normally you wouldn't have to do that, like I said. So we're going to come back to this in a second. But the trick starts with a shuffled pack, which is so nice. OK. And the premise that the spectator is going to perform a psychic feat. As soon as you say that, people are interested. OK, so the focus isn't on Blabatron anymore. Mr. Magic, it's not on him or her. Thank God. Uh, it's on the spectator. And you turn to a spectator and hopefully it's a friendly, fun spectator. And you go, you're going to perform the psychic feat right there. You're in the land of fun. OK, all of a sudden people are going to be saying things. And if you're on your toes and you're, you know, got some wit, you can respond to them. And all of a sudden the magic trick has been brought to life, right? Because the premise is you're going to do a psychic feat. But we're going to give you a little help along with uh, taking a photograph on your own phone. Fine. That's the premise. All important to establish the premise. Shuffle the pack. OK, uh, after the pack is shuffled, somebody can cut the cards if they want to say, OK, this is going to be our prediction. Does anybody know what the card is? Now, as I'm saying this and holding this out here, what am I doing? I'm getting ready my left hand for the old double lift. OK, I'm pushing off the top card, whatever it is, getting a pinky break underneath it, hoping they're not like two, four black fours, clubs and spades or too close. But even then it'll it'll fly. So you're here like this. OK, anybody know what it is? They don't know. You put it back on. Then you turn over the two cards as one and showing everybody ten of clubs. And that's a little tip. Rather than trying to show everyone down here, turn the hand over and hold it up and everybody. What's nice about this is everybody can see the 10, but it also suggests you have no control. So often magicians hold things down here and there's a sense it's a stage. It works, but it also suggests control. Whereas if you do this, it's got a real casual. So everyone sees the 10 of clubs. OK, to help you, we're going to take a photograph of the 10. I turn the double over. I don't even know what the card's going. I take off the top card. In this case, it's the seven of hearts. Now notice. You can either put it like this seven and they th remember they think it's the 10. You can put it here, pick up their phone. You've asked them to set it on photograph, whatever. And with one hand, you can go click or click like this. So you can have it like that. Or if you want it, you can put the deck down if it's a little easier for it, and click like this. The key to this is to not do it so quickly that it looks suspicious. We'll just click, 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 click. You don't want to spark suspicion, but not take too much time either. It's casual. This is all pre trick. You're presenting it as we're just warming up for something you're going to do in a moment. You don't want too much focus on this, right? But let's assume that you're doing the double lift on the deck so you don't have to take it off. OK, you guys, sorry, you got the double. You've shown the 10. You turn it over, turn this up like this. OK, it's actually the seven. You've got their phone here like this. You take a photograph of whatever the card is and you immediately give it to them to hold between their two hands. OK, this is turned down right up on top here. OK, like this now. Everybody knows where the card is. You're going to try to find it by concentrating. And I like this notion of wanting to think about, and we said the Ten of Clubs, think about the, uh, re say it, it's great so that nobody is, gets confused about what's happening. Focus on the details of the Ten of Clubs. I want you to see it in your mind's eye. All those black clubs, the number, the one, the zero, really focus. That paints a picture for everybody, okay? Really nails in the image to a point where people will almost say, we saw the photo or we saw, uh, we were able to see him take the photo. That kind of vestige memory stuff is really powerful. Okay, so we've done that. Now, what I'm going to do is get a break under the top card, okay? In this case, it's under the seven, right? And I'm going to, from the bottom, cut a small packet of cards on top while keeping the break, another small packet, two or three packets. So what it means is I end up with a break in the middle of the pack uh, between the seven and the ten. Okay. Now, 
when I told you on camera, I'm going to dribble the cards down or drop them, and the spectator can say stop or my card or now, anytime, I meant it. This is 100% free choice. But the key is you need to respond. This is an old idea that before people say now, okay, if you really look not in people's eyes or at the cards, look at their mouth. You'll see just as they're saying now, you'll have a just a hair of a beat prior to. So what I'm doing is I'm dropping a one card, a couple of cards, very few cards, waiting for them. And you can go, uh, you drop, and as soon as you see their lips move, you drop everything above the break, down, boom, right there. You say, okay, I think you'll agree that was super fair. Cutting the pack, okay, like this. Putting the seven at the bottom now, and the 10, the card they're focusing on, on top, like that, boom. Okay, you say fine. Say you focused the whole time. Let's see. Drum roll, please. Did he get it? And boom, he or she just got the ten of clubs. That's a good trick. You could have just left it like that with the phone as a theatrical prop, but you're so far ahead. So now comes the second part of the trick that is going to just destroy people's sense of what is real in this world. But before I jump in there, okay. We're here, we're here. Let me announce the winners from last week. Flesh and Bone winners, okay? You guys won uh, Flesh and Bone. It's Mario Figui Figueroa. Figueroa. Mario Figueroa. Uh, J. Jaden Clark. Uh, Donovan Vasquez. William Hitchman. Harold West. Charlie Morrison. Keith Tyron. John or Jan. John Hurst. Vlad Ouch. Yes, it's Vlad Ouch. Uh, yeah, I... I, I Yes, Vlad Ouch. Alfie Turner, uh, Peter Funt, not quite fun, but Funt, and Miles of Magic, Miles of Magic, Miles of Magic. So you all won. As I always say, uh, contact my team. First, I hope I just said your name. That would be awesome, because you're going to love the Flesh and Bone gimmick. It's very cool. Uh, one of the more popular things on my website, for sure. Um, but you send an email to my team. The address is contact at sankeymagic.com. Please don't, Miles of Fun, I'm talking to you. Don't just say my name's Miles of Fun. Here's my address. Uh, they need your first and last actual name so the mail can get to you, okay? So you let them know your real name, your YouTube name, it's different, and your mailing address, and they'll ship out the, uh, the gimmick to you, okay? So let's get back to this now. So we're here. This second part that is so cool. Oh, and I'm not a Gemini. Uh, I am not. I'm a Capricorn. Uh, the best. Everyone knows the Caps are the best. Uh, but this is from a uh, Macklemore concert a couple of years, several years ago. Um, so I'm here. So we just did first part. What's the second part? Well, because the way we cut the cards and things, the one you now want to force is on the bottom, the seven of hearts. So, you know, this is, and the, and the, the, the bridging idea here is you got it, and then you say, you know, they don't always get it. I gotta be admit, you did really well. Which all of a sudden raises what they did even higher, right? It's nice to make them the star. They don't always get it, you know? And you might be thinking, well, what do I do? I mean, put all this faith in a, in a spectator, someone from the audience. What do I do if they don't get it? Well, that's when I have to use a bit of magic, you know? Ka-ching! I have to use a bit of magic, or that's when I have to. So, for example, let's say they stopped out here. I'm gonna go through the cards, you just say stop. It's nice to give them, so this is on the bottom. And I'm gonna do the Hindu card force, where I'm pulling cards off the top real casually. And then as soon as they say now or stop or yes or that's my card or let's go there, I stop and I show this. Now, here on YouTube, and if you know, you've watched card tricks a bit, or if you're an amateur magician or professional, you know that that card was on the bottom the whole time. So it's not a totally legitimate. And they say stop, you really should be showing them maybe this card on top. But this flies every single time. I've been using this for 30 years, okay? You take it right off the seven of hearts like this. Drop that there, say seven hearts. So if you had guessed, if you got the wrong card and chose a seven of hearts, I just would have taken the seven of hearts and used it like a magic wand and just tapped the back of your hand. And you pause. People, what? You'll find that a group of five or six people, somebody will get ahead, not everyone will. It's like tap it if you have to, but give them a chance to create the effect, right? I tap it like this. Or uh, if you get the wrong card, if you want to be more on the nose, you say, all I do is take the card and can you lift your hand? Yeah, I just tap your phone. Yeah, that automatically and impossibly and magically and mind-blowingly changes the photograph in your own phone, right? You can unpack it that way. But whatever it is, when they lift up their hand and they look uh, and they tap on the, uh, the screen to bring the screen back to life and they find uh, the card, whatever the card is, everything can be examined. There's no duplicates. You did it with a shuffled pack and they've got this souvenir of the impossible magic. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, okay? If you could have a photograph of anything in the world on your phone, I want you to have a chance to win my revolutionary card magic project, okay? Any photograph on your phone you could possibly have from any point in history and anywhere in the universe, 
leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching as always. Um, and hey, before you go in, I'll do one last suggestion is I'm gonna leave a link around here to my new psychology channel on YouTube about a, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half ago. So I have a channel called Sankey Says and it's all about psychology, relationships and business, creativity. So I'll leave a link, give it a click, check it out, watch a few videos. I think you're gonna find, what I'm finding is a whole bunch of my magic fans are going over there, checking out and really enjoying those psychology videos as well. So check that out and I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching.